Caddis Maximus here once again. This time I'm talking about automatic center punches. Since I was going to go inside at least one of these, uh, I decided to give a second video. So these are always kind of the, the nicer tool. People are always kind of like, oh, you have an automatic center punch. With center punching, you usually use center punching to mark a specific point or in particular to make a little divot. So when you're drilling a hole, even when you have modern split tip uh, drill bits, they don't always work perfectly. So if you really want to to drill a hole on a specific location and make sure the drill bit starts there and doesn't want to walk off from one side or the other, you use a center punch. Many times what people will have is one of such as either a set or just an individual one of these, and that's what these are, is center punches. These are just basically little sharpened chisels. They can also be used as scribes. But this is what they're intended for, is to mark something. Maybe you would mark a crosshatch uh, with a scribe, and then you'd use a center punch on it, take it, and then hit it with a hammer to make to get a nice little dent, a nice little divot, to, so you can drill it out. And I have reviewed these sterrets before, but that's what standard center punches look like. Now there are also automatic center punches, which are ones that have a mechanism in them so, and uh, springs, so when you put a bunch of tension, you push down, they have a snapping or a release action, and then they use, of course, hardened tips that leave a nice little dent. We actually have this one, which is a Starrett. We have a U.S. General, and then we have this little guy, which is a very compact style. These can all have the tips replaced in them, but just to demonstrate how they work, we'll use this little piece of uh, brass here. We'll start off with the Starrett. Many of these, you can adjust how much power. This little one is uh, a, just a specific amount of power. But many of these, like the Starrett, you can unscrew or you can screw in the back handle. What that is doing is adjusting the amount of spring pressure. So if I were to demonstrate by having this all the way out, and I tend to leave them out if I'm storing them for a while so that the springs don't get a set in them. And we can see if that, well, that was too close to that point there. There we go. So we can see that we left just a tiny little divot using the Starrett here. I can see that I've already actually damaged the point on this. It's actually pretty darn dull. Let me go ahead and use the U.S. General. I didn't realize I had already abused my Starrett so much. They tended to dull out because oftentimes you're trying to drill on some kind of harder piece of metal, and then that ends up dulling the tip. So we'll do the same demonstration with the U.S. General here. There's a nice little dot. You can see... Actually, the Starrett was doing just fine, too, but there's the U.S. General. It's just this little dot right there. Now, if we take the back of it and we just crank it down, and this actually has a heavy or light, is what they call it, heavy or light hitting. If we screw it all the way down, now we have a bunch of extra spring tension. So I'll make another mark right next to the first one here. And this is actually, these center punches are bending this piece of brass. We can see that we have a much deeper divot. Oftentimes, they do leave nice little divots for marking, but to tell you the truth, and as we can see here, they even in brass, they don't leave a deep enough dent to really be used to start off drill bits, and that's kind of why I don't use these as often, why they would be stored and stored long enough to actually worry about having to reduce the spring tension, is because I use them occasionally for marking, but when you really need a nice deep divot, you really do need to use standard center punches that you can hit with a hammer and make a nice deep divot. And while we're at it, this one's actually nice and sharp. Well, you go ahead and use this compact version here. And we'll just show how that works. See, it gives you a nice little dot. But even in, in hard metals, it just leaves a tiny mark that you can barely see. So although they're handy, they're just a, uh, they're not as handy as you would think. Also, due to the nature of the tips, you can replace them, but they're kind of difficult to sharpen. And surprisingly enough, there's a variety of different sizing, like the Starrett, which is just huge, the General, which is an intermediate size, and then this red one, which is really nice and compact. If we are going to compare against some features, the Starrett has this feature here where it has this second collar, where when you press it against something, the tip the, that little sh sleeve sits on the surface, and I believe that's just something to help prevent one 
things from getting bent when you're using it on thin material like this, as well as to keep it from sliding around. I never fully understood this additional sleeve that the Starrett has, but it is one feature of it. And surprisingly enough, it is built pretty well. But as far as Starrett tools, and this is a genuine Starrett, this is always the number 8 to 19, always seem to be uh, not quite, I mean, it's a nice tool, but does, and it's quite cheap for a Starrett tool. Um, but never seem to be quite the same build quality as the others, especially, and I think part of that's because it has an all aluminum body, which really quickly and easily gets dinged up. I like the U.S. General one a lot better, and we can see this. This is a uh, General Hardware, and number 79 there. See, this one actually has a machine steel body. It also has good knurling, maybe not as good as Starrett. Starrett's knurling is always great. But it is smaller diameter, but yet weighs more, and it's kind of nice. It has a quite a bit of heft to it, and it feels like a nice tool. The one thing I do appreciate, even though it doesn't come with any, is they have easily replaceable tips. They have that little bit of uh, knurling there, and you can just unscrew the tip, and then screw another new tip back into it. And so I've always kind of liked that a lot, and I think that's a great feature. And it doesn't have a special collar or anything, it's just a standard one. Uh, you can see I do need to oil this a little more. We're getting a little bit of surface rust, so I'll be doing that after the end of the video. And then this is just to show that they do make real lightweight. This is an aluminum body, super lightweight, compact pen style. It actually did have a little uh, uh, pocket clip on it, but it since broke off on me and I need to fabricate a new one. But this is just to show that these automatic center punches can come in a variety of sizes. Now, they're actually pretty simple. And I'll open up this red one because it's a little bit more funky getting these uh, other two back together. But these things really is surprising. The mechanism is all controlled. There's really one critical part in a direction. So if we will pull out the back part here. And that's just a cap that retains a primary spring, which is this large steel spring. We have a ball bearing. And then we have this strange, this is looks like a little tiny uh, steel baseball bat with a hole in it. This is one critical part that actually makes that snapping action. And then if we pull across apart the front, we've got the housing. And we've got this piece right here. Interestingly enough, this piece, you can see how it has a divot in one side or a uh, concave in one side and it's flat on the other. This is a critical piece. If it's put in backwards, this will click once and won't work again. And if it's put in correctly, it will work normally, where it clicks every time that you use it. Then we just have a guide piece. Then we have the actual uh, rod that, uh, or excuse me, the tip, which can be replaced. You can see they have like a tiny little snap ring right there to hold the spring. And of course, a secondary spring, which allows the whole mechanism to reset. So it's real surprising that inside here, there's only just a... Uh, a few little parts. As a matter of fact, inside this little red one here, uh, there is 10 parts total, and that's if you're including this little uh, snap ring as a part. If you're not including the little snap ring as a part, there's only nine pieces here. And that's why I always thought what made them so neat is that just a couple of specially designed pieces of metal and some springs and a ball bearing in there, and you can have this little tool that will snap and click every time that you use it. And I believe I can explain how these work in a relatively intelligent fashion, but if we take the whole part stack, which inside the body would look something uh, exactly like this, with the little concave facing towards the anvil, and then we have the, little, uh, the tip right there. And this would be the same in size, similar to inside these, but this tip actually goes through here this little special concave collar, the little baseball bat piece that has a hole in it, when it is landed on this concave, it's slightly offset. It's not perfectly lined up. And so the back of the tip actually would feed into the anvil. But what ends up happening is since it's kind of offset and wobbling, the back of this tip is actually sitting on the edge of this. And as you push it up, and we can actually see that wear, where this is slammed down, is as you push this up and it goes up into the bore, it eventually hits a spot and it's able to wobble on that ball bearing where this large spring 
causes it to finally slip and align with the hole, and then this comes slamming down onto the back of the tip, and that's how it works. Is each time you press it, you press it, and it pushes it back against the spring until it slips, hits, and then when you reset it, the front spring draws this back, and then since this is sitting in this weird little concave, it will re-offset, and that's what allows you to run it each time. And so if, the, if you ever take one of these apart and then it doesn't work or clicks once, it's usually because there's just one part like this or maybe the anvil that was just put in backwards and you just take it apart and flip it around and it'll work just fine. And it really is pretty, to pretty easy to reassemble these. Once you kind of have the parts figured out, it's nice because they're very easy to clean out because we just put that in there, we drop the spring in there, the ball bearing, the hammer, the little concave piece that's facing the hammer, the tip, its spring, we put all that all into here, kind of like this. And then we get the front piece on here. That little clip also prevents that from falling out, the tip from falling out of the front of it, and voila, we put it back together, and that easy, it works absolutely perfectly. So that is one nice thing about these, is they can be fully rebuilt, and the mechanism essentially will easily outlast the tip, and that's really the big issue is when you get one of these, uh, trying to find replacement tips, because they all seem to use their own special tip. There is no real standardization. Anyway, that was kind of a long video and talk about these automatic center punches, but they've always been kind of neat tools, and I wanted some for a long time, I remember. And then once I finally started getting some, I actually don't use them that often. Even though they're great, it's just the issue of the tips, where if you have standard center punches and they start to round out, you just spend just a moment on a grinder to resharpen them. And you can do that to a certain degree with these, but the other issue I've had with these is they just don't seem to last that long and oftentimes I need something that hits I need a much bigger divot than what one of these can leave they're excellent for materials like a soft metals like aluminum but even once you get up to brass we can see that um, it really just leaves a mark not a big dent that you can start a drill bit with so they kinda end up sitting there in a tool collection not getting used very often Anyway, that was the end of another video, uh, this time about automatic center punches. I think next time we'll talk about uh, hand reamers and deburring tools. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus out.